welcome you to our Sunday morning service. Well, I haven't seen some of you since early March. Um, it's a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. And we pray that this, this service would be a blessing to each and every one of us. Um, because we are all familiar with this lockdown that, that, that we had. In fact, we are still in it. And we hope that everything goes well so we could get back to normal worship in the house of the Lord. Uh, we now have our intercession prayer by Sister Angie. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning, giving you thanks and giving you praise. For what a wonderful God you are. Father God, this morning, as we, the church, come to assemble here this morning, this is enough to give God thanks and praise for. God, you are so awesome. You are so um, glorious, Lord. Father God, we just thanking you for those who are able to come out this morning. Lord, a Lord did want the church door to open up. And Father God, you has opened up the church door. So Father God, all of those who want the church door open up, I pray to this morning, Lord, that they will come and receive a blessing. Oh, for those who have not given their lives to you, Lord, I pray to that they will give their life to you because this same COVID-19 is a good thing and it's a bad thing. A lot of certain things people never should do, they are doing. Father God, I give you thanks. I give you praise. I give you glory. Oh, Jesus, I pray this morning that all of us need a cleansing. All the bad ways we had in, with the COVID-19, I prayed that when we come back in here this morning, and Lord, as the band lift up next week, Lord, that we will change our ways. Because we know that Christ is soon to come. Father God, as we worship here this morning, we must worship you in the spirit and in truth, in the beauty of holiness, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, Sister Angie. Thank you. I call worship him His Majesty. Country reading is taken from Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Could you remain standing for the reading, please? Good morning, church. Good morning. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. And the is the and the Together, for the Lord. Uh, 
First hymn we praise, hymn number 74, 74, O oh God, our help in age. It's good to back to, to be back in the house of the Lord this morning, is it not? Let us bow our heads and let's turn to the Lord. Our Father and our God, we are so thankful to be here. Your word says, in all things give thanks. And I know that there are so many thankful hearts here this morning. And even at home, there are some who are glad that we are beginning to return to what used to be normal. And so, Father God, we would just like to just bring to you this morning in a real and in a special way the families of the Bahamas, but most particularly the families of Temple Baptist Church. Each family has its different needs, its different concerns, its different wants, its different desires. And you know what those are, and you know whether those wants are within your will. And we are going to you are going to grant them as you see fit. We remember those who are hurting for whatever reason, families who may have lost loved ones, family who We remember those who may have family members who are ill in hospital and who they cannot visit. But you, you are God of everywhere and you are in the hospital too. Though sometimes those times in the hospitals can seem lonely and persons there can seem so also oh alone. But, oh God, we ask that your Holy Spirit move up and down through the, the hospitals and the clinics. And indeed, in those homes where there are loved ones set aside because they are ill. We ask that you just speak words of comfort and peace to them. That despite everything and everything seems so ugly and grim around, may they know, may they know that just trusting you in you all will be well. 
Remember the little ones who perhaps sometimes don't have a full of an understanding of what is going on. And we ask that you bless them and meet their needs in your own special way. Oh Father, we look to at the educational system as they try to arrange things in a way that is equitable and fair and best for all. Students looking at end of year exams and still a little confused and perplexed as to what is happening. And even the senior ones who are looking forward to, to going off perhaps to school, to college, to university, and who are not quite sure. But Lord, you are God of this world, you are God of the schools, you are God of the colleges, and you are so known to make a way where there is no way. Help these young people to trust. And we know that whatever you do is going to be well done. Father, we, we just remember Temple in a real and a special way. We have young people ranging from babies. And we have elders way up who have served you for many, many years. You know what those individual needs are. And so we're going to ask that you would bless and meet those needs. May we never take anything for granted. May we ever be grateful for what we have. Father God, just touch our hearts. May we use every moment that you have given us for your good. None of us knows how much time we have left. None of us knows what the next moment will bring. But we would ask that you would just help us to use it to your honor and to your glory. Let us, from this time on, set self aside. Because the, the evidence seems to be that your, your son's return is imminent. He is coming soon. So let us all do all that we can to be prepared. And also to tell others that the wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life. And so, Father, we just commit families, the educational system, and all of those who are members of temple, friends of temple, connected to temple, who say that they are, uh, the temple is their church, although we may not have seen them for many, many months, maybe even years. May this situation perhaps Give them a new perspective and help them to recognize that they need to find their way back. And Lord, when everything is over, indeed not when it is over, but even as it continues, may we remember, never forgetting, to give you the honor and the praise and the glory for those are due to you and to no one else. As we ask all of this, in the name of our precious Savior and Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Our next prayer will be for the National Health and Health Workers. Um, we'd ask Sister Lovita to come and do that for us. Good morning all, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before your throne in prayer, O oh God. First of all, Lord, to ask for forgiveness for every sin I've committed, O oh God. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for this day, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God, that we can be in one place, O oh God, to worship, to fellowship, O oh God, with you, to commune with you, O oh God. Heavenly Father, I bring the healthcare system to you, O God. All the healthcare workers, O God, nationwide, O God, all around the world, I ask you, Lord, to bless them and keep them safe, O God. Watch over them in a special way, O God. As we all go through this pandemic, O God, called COVID-19. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity that we have, O oh God, to build a closer relationship with you, O oh God. Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, 
to watch over all of us, oh God. The doctors, the nurses, oh God, the auxiliary nurses, oh God, even the cleanest of these facilities, oh God. I ask you, Lord, to be with them, oh God, and keep them safe, oh God, as they work together, oh God, to try and combat this pandemic, oh God, to keep us safe, oh God. Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, to cover us in a special way. Protect us, oh God. Protect our healthcare workers, oh God even their families, oh God. Sometimes they are not able to go home, oh God, for many days, for many weeks, oh God. But they continue to work, oh God. They continue to go out there and fight for us, oh God. They ask us to stay home and they stay to work to help, oh God. Father God, I ask you, Lord, to let your will be done in all of their lives, oh God, in their family lives, oh God. Strengthen them, oh God. Watch over them in a special way, O oh God. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, that there are some sense of the country opening up, O oh God. I ask you, Lord, to help us to continue, O oh God, to, to adhere to the rules and the regulations of the government, O oh God, to obey the laws of the land, O oh God, to do social distancing, O oh God. And Heavenly Father, we'd be mindful to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise, O oh God. I ask you to protect all healthcare workers, O oh God. Protect every home, O oh God. Protect every individual, O oh God. And Father God, we say thank you. We honor you. We glorify you. This I ask in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Evangelist. Uh, we now have a Last prayer will be done by Deacon Julian Anderson Rule, praying for all, all the authorities. Our Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come back into this house to worship corporately, God. It's been a while, but we thank you that you have never been away from us, even for a moment. We pray, God, that you would help us to realize that you transcend these four walls and that we are in fact your church and you promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so we thank you for your, your presence each day of our lives as we would have experienced this pandemic. We thank you God that you are supreme God, you are bigger than any pandemic. The earth is still here God even during the last one and now we have survived this one and though the toll has been great God, we thank you that you can still depend on you because you are a faithful God. You've blessed us in so many ways, God, and so we cannot help but say thanks. We are alive and well, and we are in good health, God, and though we may have difficult times, God, we still have much to give you thanks for. Thanks, God, that you have allowed us to wake up every morning to be able to breathe in fresh air, some of us to be able to go out and work. We thank you, God, that you've protected our country, God, that you've kept us alive and well. You've just minimized the number of infections, God, you've minimized the number of deaths. And so we thank you, God, that we have been able to be our brother's keepers and, and help those who are in need, God. We know that there are some people who may be falling through the cracks, God, but we thank you nevertheless that you have provided for them. Continue to open our eyes, God, and help us to see the needs of those around us and to meet those needs. God, we come thanking you for our leaders today. We bring them all before you because we know that they have a great task at hand. And we pray for strength for them, God, and that you would help them to look to you for wisdom, that you would guide them and help them to make the right decisions, God, and for the best interests of the country. We pray, God, for our prime minister, his cabinet, and all the members in government, both opposition. God, as they continue to make rules and, and things that will govern us accordingly for our own safety. God, we pray that you would help them to see the need to trust in you, because you are, in fact, a faithful God. You the, have been the one who have been taking care of us all during these years before the pandemic. God, we, you are the one who will take care of us during the pandemic, and you are the one who will help us, God, to get back to a sense of normalcy post this pandemic. And so we pray, God, that you'd help them to rely on you. Grant them the wisdom that they need, God, as they make decisions, God, for our benefit, as they continue to deliberate on how to get the economy started again. I pray, God, that you'd help them not to have selfish outlook, but, Lord, to look for the benefit of those from the least in our communities, even up to the greatest. We pray, God, that you'd help them to design programs which will 
deal with those who are falling through the cracks, those who are having difficult times, those who are without jobs, those who need help, those who need food, those who need transportation. God, we know the situation appears to be bleak, but we pray that you would raise up these men who will trust you and who will have the wisdom to know what it is to do the right thing. We pray, God, that you would just help them as they deliberate with lockdowns and opening up the economy and getting the borders open up again and being concerned about job provisions and job creations, God. We know that it's a, it's a difficult time for the government even as they deal with the debt, the mounting debt and the expenses and the fact that revenue is down. It seems to be so bleak, God, but we thank you that even in the midst of it all, we realize that when the children of Israel were faced with the, river, with the Jordan on one side, the Red Sea on one in the front, and the enemies behind, they had to look to you for deliverance. And so it is with us in this situation, God. We just ask that you would help them to look to you for direction, for guidance. And as we, as your citizens, God, that you'd help us to submit to authorities to do what it is that we need to do to protect ourselves, to obey the laws of the land. We thank you and praise you. And as your people, help us to support them and to uplift them all the time, God. We know that you are going to make a great nation out of this small country. And so as we go forward in this service, we just lift you up and praise you for who you are and what you've done. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Julian. At this time, we have a welcome and announcement. We'd like Sister Ruth to come and do it for us. Pleasant good morning. Welcome back, everyone. After the pandemic, um, I know everybody has been missing everyone, but it's good to be back. It's good to be back. The announcements are as follows. Thanks for making the sacrifice to show up for this time of worship today. May God bless you. Please remember to pray for those who chose to shelter in place and also our elderly. The worship service will continue to be on YouTube. It will be posted later this week, and you're asked to subscribe. Prayer and Bible study will continue to be held on Wednesdays in the daytime, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., until the weeknight curfew has been lifted. Our condolences to the family of Sister Catherine who went home to be with the Lord on the 7th of May. Thank God for lending her to us for 78 years. Please pray for her children, Monique, Eddie, Paul, and the White family. Also, we remember the, the family of Brother Algie Malcolm, and we remember all the families, family and friends of those who lost persons due to COVID-19 or during this time um, of this pandemic. We remember all of you, so our condolences go to all of our members who have lost loved ones and friends. Congratulations goes out to Rache Fees, Jaden Fees, Lyndon Brown, and all who made honor roll and principal lists this school year. Special congratulations to Kamari Sawyer, who will be made deputy head girl for QC this year, 2020-2021. We want to say happy belated birthday to all who celebrated between the month of March and to up to today, because we weren't here to say special happy birthday to you, but you are in our thoughts and prayers. So we want to say happy belated birthday to all of you who celebrated. This week's birthday are as follows. Donard Newton is today. Nadja Knight is on the 11th. And Paul Dorsett will be celebrating on the 12th. If you're happy to be in the house, give God a loud round of applause. That is very weak. Give God a loud round of applause. Amen, 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 amen. I'm happy to be here. Happy to see all of you. We're going to... Kick off our shoes and 
Praise the Lord. Amen. One thing the pandemic has done is to show the whole world that what? Our God is in control. Our God is the one. You are the, you are the only God. The whole world, all the major cities, all the major countries, everyone was locked down, yes? I'm happy to be out here. Some people didn't make it. Give God a hallelujah if you're happy to be out here. Say it louder. Hallelujah. We can still talk with our masks on. God is good. That's what we're going to sing this morning. Uh, if God has been good to you, say God is good. God is good. He is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I'm thankful to be right here, right? Ten seconds where you are. Thank God for being in the house today. Thank you, Lord God. I bless you. I praise you. I worship you. I adore you. For you are great. One day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for who you are. Bless you, praise you, worship and adore you. Let's forget about ourselves, forget about everything, forget about whatever is around us and focus on God, for he is good and his mercy endure forever. God is good. We are the church, yes? We are the church. Let's get out there and tell everybody about Jesus, for he is good. God is good. Bye. 
the Most High God. Today, as we think about communion and celebrating that Christ came, we're forever grateful. Say, I'm grateful. I am grateful. Oh, that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Thank you, Lord God. And this whole pandemic is about reaching the lost for Christ. More people have been reached than ever before. Amen? We couldn't come to the building, but we were able to reach the four corners of the earth. And so we give God the thanks and praise that he came. He sent Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for Jesus. I'm forever grateful. Thank you, Sister Rod. Now time for a scripture reading. Oh. Done by Sister Rona. The scripture reading is taken from Jeremiah 29, verses 4 through 14. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat of the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and diminish, not diminish. And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, 
let not your prophets and, and your diviners that ye be the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken unto your dreams, and which ye cause ye to dreams. For the prophecy, for they prophesy falsely unto, unto you in my name, and I have not sent them, said the Lord. For thus said the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall do, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found, and I will be found of you, said the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I, whither I have diverse you, said the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I cause you to be carried away captive. The word of the Lord has already been blessed. Thank you, Sister Marona. The next item would be special music by the conquerors. Special music by the conquerors.
The message today is, with God, your future matter. Uh, this will be presented by our senior pastor, Pastor A. Jeffrey Wood. As he comes, could you please stand? Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Feast, for leading, and you may be seated. I want to join in saying thanks to all those of you who made it possible to be here or made the sacrifice to come and uh, be in church this morning. Um, I never thought that I would feel strange coming back to, uh, to church or be um, joyful about the opportunity to, to come to church, but um, I do uh, feel a sense of joy being able to come back and to worship and to praise and thank. So I want to take all those, thank all those who took part this morning, those who prayed. Um, Sister Verona for reading the scriptures for us and the conquerors and all others. And so this is what new life will look like. You can only sit beside somebody if that's your family. Wow. That's interesting. I want to share some thoughts uh, this morning um, as they appear in the bulletin. Uh, it's with God, your future matters. With God, your future matters, and I'm sure that a lot of us have been asking a lot of questions in recent times, wondering if there was a future. Moreover, does that future matter? Because our future has been challenged and has been everything else. So. This morning, we're going to look, use Jeremiah chapter 29, and I, I love this, uh, especially for verse 11. Um, Jeremiah chapter 29 is a letter from God through Jeremiah to Israel, who was in exile in Babylon. What had happened, that they had sinned against God, and God moved aside and allowed them to be carried off into exile. Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian army surrounded uh, Jerusalem, I think it was something like 588 BC. And they uh, stayed outside the city, they brought the city under siege, and uh, waited and waited. At one stage, uh, Jerusalem, the leaders uh, sneaked out and went to Egypt and asked Egypt if they would come and help them. And Egypt agreed, uh, got an army together, and sent their army to help Israel um, against, in the fight against Assyria. But when the Assyrian army went after the Egyptian army, they ran back home and left Israel on their own with the siege. 
And after about two years, I think it was 586, remember we're going that way, 586, um, the, the Assyrians uh, went into, uh, through the wall, through the gates and into the city and ravaged it. And they took people from there and carried them into Babylon. I think it was in uh, Jeremiah 51 and 20 something. Uh, Jeremiah said that there were 28, two, sorry, 853 people, but then reading further, I found out that these were just healthy men that they took. That did not include all the women and children and older men. And so we don't know for sure what the number was, but it was quite a number. And uh, Nebuchadnezzar took them into uh, Babylon and set them up in an area by themselves, so to speak. And as they were there, they were bewildered. They were really an unhappy people. You remember when the Babylonians asked them to sing them a song? And they said, how can we sing you a song in this land that's so far from home? And while they were there and in limbo and worrying and fretting and the like, this letter came from Jeremiah, and the letter was God's way of reminding them that with him, their future mattered. That with him, Israel's future mattered. And he wanted them to follow a course of action because he was going to bring them out of Egypt's, uh, sorry, Babylon's exile and back home to Jerusalem. And here's what the letter tells them to do. First, he said, psych out the enemy, or psych out the Babylonians. Psych them out. And that's verse five and six. Psych them out. Then the second thing he said uh, to them, push back against false prophets who are going to show up there in Babylon. Push back hard against them. And the third thing he said, prepare to return to normal, or prepare to return home to Jerusalem, which for them would be normal. And so we want to talk about these in relationship to where we find ourselves, pinned down by the pandemic, imprisoned by the pandemic. And I think we need to use the same strategy because with God, you and I, your future, and my future matter to him. And so we can use the same strategy. Father, thank you for these moments. Thank you for this time back in church. Thank you for this time in the word. God, speak to our hearts and speak to our lives. Help us to open our hearts to receive your word. I ask that you will just use every faculty of mine. They are available to you. I also pray, Lord, that you will lower the cross, as I always ask you to do, symbolically so, so that I may preach from behind that low, lowered cross, and all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor will go to you. If we're going to experience the fact that our future matters to God, I think we're going to have to follow Jeremiah's advice to Israel. And the first thing Jeremiah said to Israel, you've got to psych out the enemy. Take over. Take 
the power out of his hands. Psych him out. You stay in control. Take over control from him. How do you do that? He said, put down roots. Act normal. Learn to live a normal life in an, in an abnormal environment and during abnormal times. This, is your, this will be your way of expressing hope in a time of hopelessness. This is a way to psych out the enemy. They, can't, they would not be able to understand how come you're so comfortable when they're throwing their best at you. And I think that's what we need to do to Satan and COVID. We need to psych them out. We need to say to know that even though he's throwing his best at us, even though COVID is throwing his best at us, we are going to live uh, confident. We're going to act strong and confident. And uh, so we could psych them out. How do you do that? He said, build houses, verse 5. Psych them out physically. Go ahead and build houses. Uh, Brother Sergeant, the contractors will be busy. He said, build houses. That was not a good time to build anything more or to build dwelling houses. But he said, build houses. Also, not just build houses, but while you're building your houses, have in mind that you'll be, you're building homes. Not just empty houses, but you're going to have families to, dr to dwell in these houses, and they're going to become homes. Let Satan see that he can't stop the flow. We are building houses, building homes. Also, that's the, that's the psychological part of it. Also, do something spiritual. Build communities. Don't stop building communities. I know a lot of communities have fallen apart. A lot of communities have um, just dis uh, almost disintegrated because everybody's attention was on the virus. Everybody's attention was on Satan's activity. But here, Jeremiah said, no, don't pay any attention. Don't let him take your attention. Don't let the virus take all of your attention. Uh, just the other day, all you could hear, corona, corona, corona. And uh, we, like nothing else was worth the while talking about. Just Mr. Corona or Miss Corona. I don't know which one. But here, uh, 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 um, Jeremiah said, I want you to start building communities. How do you do that? Promote peace and goodwill. Uh, so many people were using their cell phones to send all kinds of silly, stupid messages around, picking up stuff from everybody, send it to everybody else. You know, the best thing to do with those kind of things, leave them where you meet, just delete them and let them go into oblivion. But the whole time, this person sending this and that person sending the other, well, I don't have... What's up so nobody sent me anything? <laughs> but you need to promote peace and goodwill. Then there were people criticizing other people and finding fault with everybody. We need to use the time. See, the enemy likes that. We need to show him that we're going to create peace and goodwill in the communities. Then he said, pray against some things. Now, I trust that a lot of us had been using our time to pray against some things. Example, pray against sickness. There's a lot of hypotension in town. There's a lot of diabetes in town. There's a lot of cancer in town. There are a lot of all kinds of ills in town. We needed to take that time that we got from the virus, uh, just being shut in or separated from uh, the, the uh, community, but just take that time to really pray and really appeal to God to heal people. There's so many sick people in the town and we need to, don't ignore them, we need to pray for them and we need to ask God to uh, just do something in their lives. 
pray against setbacks, particularly so economic setbacks. Pray for visitor resumption. Pray uh, that there be um, diversity in agriculture and fisheries and manufacturing. Just pray against uh, that's pray against starvation threats. That's where the uh, the diversification come in. Somebody sent sent an email saying that the uh, the people out there are very afraid that this pandemic is going to cause uh, starvation and that there are starvation threats. But no, we're not going to take that. Our God, we, know, we have a God who can push back against starvation threats. We're going, this is a good opportunity for the government of the Bahamas and the people of the Bahamas to diversify, to do things that they were not doing before. Instead of relying on the farmers in the U.S., do your own. Look how big Andrews is, Brother Sidney. Huge, can produce chickens, produce uh, beef, can produce anything. So this is a good thing. Pray about that, that God will bring it to pass. Then pray for sin in the hearts of men, women, boys, and girls uh, that, that, that exhibits itself in disobedience and disrespect and uh, disregard for norms, things like life. Uh, so many people, sin has caused them to disrespect other people's life, disrespect other people's character. You know, and when we see that um, video from uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, where that policeman thought it was okay to put his knee on somebody's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. And he kept it there, even though the man was crying out, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. That only sin, and he sat there with his hand in his pocket looking up like nothing was happening. I believe, I tell you right now, that's sin, and sin can make you do some terrible, terrible thing. Let's pray that God will, will, will do something about our young men and our young women whom sin has taken a hold of in the country. And then pray about taking your witness to another level. I don't think we take it seriously now. Let's tell people about Jesus. Let's tell people that they need to give their life to Jesus. You know how many people were around town scrambling because they didn't know God, so they, couldn't, they didn't have him to look to. And then we, these are the things we pray against, but then we need to pray for some things. Example, let's pray for politicians and policemen. We got Brother Ken here, I got Brother Feast here, and uh, we just want to pray. Uh, we should be praying for politicians and policemen. I guess the policemen say, now don't put us in the class of the politicians. Pray for us, but we're different. But we need to pray for our politicians. You realize that these are the people who have the leadership of the country in their hands. And they do whatever they want to do, and let's pray that God will take over their minds and their spirit and lead them aright. Also pray for peace in the world. The world is turned upside down. Let's pray for peace in the world. You know, that George Floyd situation has ricocheted around the world. I was surprised to see the crowd in London that gathered to demonstrate. And so it has awakened people all over the world. Pray for peace. Pray for people who are having a harder time than you. If you think COVID has uh, brought hard time on you, take a moment and listen to some other people. And when you hear their story, you'll ask, God, forgive me for complaining. Please forgive me for complaining. And I told the church on a couple of Wednesdays back how that um, I was on a, a virtual um, 
uh, session, uh, doing some training. And uh, when I heard what's happening to people around the world, I said, Wood, if I hear you complaining, you'll be in trouble with Wood. A lot of people, folk, are having a hard time. A lady had just, uh, a lady had bought a house. She was a single parent. And she's been paying for it for seven years. And because of COVID, she lost her job and missed a couple payments. And the bank called her and said, if you don't come, we're going to sell your house. We're going to take your house. In fact, they already started foreclosure. And all she could do was just cry. So don't complain, please. Please. Also, pray for preachers that we'll do our due, due diligence, that we'll do what's right. We'll do what we're supposed to do. And finally, pray for power to keep on trucking. Anybody in here wants to keep on trucking in spite of COVID? Amen. Pray for power, that the Holy Spirit's power will descend upon you and push you forward in spite of COVID. And then, God, we need to know that God has a purpose in all this. So he's going to get us out of this and back to where we belong. For Israel, it was back home to Jerusalem. For you and for me, for you and for me, it is back to normalcy. Some refer to it as the new normal. And I'll take that too. What about you? I'll take a new normal. Just get me out of this. And this is going to be so because with God, my future matters. Consequently, he has plans for my life and yours on the way forward. Anybody believe that? I know the plans I have for you. God has plans for your life. But the only way you, you can take part in those plans, you got to survive COVID. You got to survive the pandemic if you're going to take plan, part in those plans. And so help me do right even now. Let's cancel Satan's plans so that God's plans can come into effect. Satan, we cancel your plans this morning on our lives and on the lives of our children and the lives of our family. We pull down your stronghold. We cancel your plans this morning. In the name of Jesus and through the blood of Jesus Christ, we cancel every diabolical plan that you have hanging over this nation and God's people. And we need to push back against false prophets, verses 8 and 9. False prophets offer hope, but it's false hope. How do they do that? Well, Jeremiah said, beware of false prophets because of their presence. Beware of the presence of false prophets among you. But we don't have any of those in the Bahamas, right? We don't have any of those in Nassau. Amen? We don't? They're all over the place. False prophets. Not only because of their presence, but beware of their persuasion. They're deceptive. They want to persuade you. They're deceptive. Verse 8b. Beware of the false prophets because of their program. What's their program? They will cause you to dream dreams and then interpret those dreams 
giving you false hope in an otherwise hopeless situation. Now, what if you got that? They'll tell you what they believe you need, you want to hear. They are the diviners too. These are the ones who work Obia. Do you realize you got some ministers working Obia in town? If they ain't working it, they practice it. And so, Jeremiah said, watch out for these people. Watch out for their programs. Recently, someone had the whole town Christians and non-Christians alike. Sister Angie called me about it. Pastor, what do you think about this? This woman said the end is near. The death angel is coming. A few days. And so Christians, non-Christians alike, were scrambling to find pieces of red cloth to display for their protection against the passing of the death angel. Anybody heard about that? Oh, I'm on, only Sister Angie and I. Where's that Nika? Nika heard too, because we talk. Oh, yeah, she right there. We talk about it. Nika was, Nika was, what? Pastor, you think this thing is coming? I gotta get ready. <laughs> they were looking and looking for red cloth. I, I guess the uh, the fabric shops ran out. <laughs> Boy, plenty F and M shirts got cut up <laughs> and stuck up, and plenty homes. <laughs> They, they just, that was convenient, man. Cut up f and M shirts. I tell you, you and I, but has the, has the time passed, Sister Andrew? Has the time the lady mentioned passed? Oh, oh okay, okay. I, I didn't know, you know. Okay. So here's what I want to say. You and I need the spirit of discernment in times like these. If we are to survive the false prophets. Amen? And if you don't have the spirit of discernment, if it's not strong, pray. God, please give me the spirit of discernment because too much stuff's going around town and I have trouble deciphering what is and what's not. God called the false prophets out and so should you and I. And again, we cancel their behavior. We cancel their behavior among us. And then finally, Jeremiah said, prepare to return to normal. Or prepare to return home. Anybody is preparing to return to normal or you settle that normal ain't gonna come? Anybody? You prepare to return to normal. Anybody else prepare to return to normal? Anybody expect normal up ahead? Anybody expect to walk in normal on the way forward? Amen, man. We should have our both hands. I, this too shall pass. I say that again. This too shall pass. Why? Because Sister Rosetta mentioned it. What did you say, Sister Rosetta? God is in charge. I say that again. God is in charge. 
and this too shall pass. Because God has promised to perform it. And what God promises, he will deliver. You know that? If God promises something, he will deliver. He said, start preparing to return home. Verse 10 and 11 says, For thus said the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I'll visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. I like that verse. I like this verse. For I know the thoughts that what? I think toward you, said the Lord. Amen. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God has a plan for your life on the road forward. So you can't quit now. You can't drop out now. You can't let COVID take you out now. God has too much at stake in your life. I want all of us in here to come up against COVID. Determine in our heart. We'll fight you to the grave. We'll fight you on the, in the hospital bed. We'll fight you on the ventilator. We'll fight you through. Because I'm going to realize the plans that God has for my life. And if you get me, you'll get me fighting. I'll go down fighting. I'll go down hoping. I'll go down believing because I know God has something good for me. Something good is going to happen. Found the road. And so in verse 10, it says, Start preparing to return home to Jerusalem. Or for us, start preparing for the new normal. God has promised, I will visit you at an already Prearranged time, 70 years. It doesn't have, it means it's going to be a good while, but stay hoping I am going to visit you. I'm coming back. I'll perform my good word toward you. I will cause you to return home, that is, to normalcy. God wants to, and God will perform his plan for your life. And in your life, don't miss God's plan for your life. God says, I have my plan includes peace. Anybody wants peace of mind? I long for peace of mind. Peace of mind when you can be at peace. Goodness and character when you can have Good character. Character is who you are when nobody's looking. God said, I want to I develop good character in you. I want to develop the hope of heaven in you. Be diligent. Call upon me with all your heart. Seek me with all your heart. And you'll find me. And when you do that, I will turn away your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations of the world. And I'll bring you back home to normalcy. And I don't know where you are in this whole thing. I don't know where you are. I don't know what your worries are like. Maybe they're economical. Maybe they're relational. I'm not just not sure. But I want to give you assurance today. If you seek God, if you seek God, no matter how far out you are, God will fix it for you. Amen. Amen. I'm asking you to stay strong. 
in all of this. Stay strong. Psych out the enemy. Psych him out. Behave in his presence as though he's no, of no significance. Push back against those false prophets. And prepare to go back home. Prepare for a new normal. Prepare. Stop preparing in the, in the face of the enemies, of enemy, Satan and COVID. Just stop preparing. They wonder, what? All that I threw at this person and they still have hope? for the future? Yes! A thousand times yes because I know who's in charge and I know that with God my future matters. Anybody in here doubting that? Anybody believe that with God your future matters? Be strong. Thank you.